Volodymyr Danilenko, a writer and a literary critic. Igor Pavluk's poetry is an extension of traditional poetic art of Ukraine. His poems are predicated on a syllabic tonic pattern of verse and harbor a poetic language of Ukrainian people. Igor Pavluk's poetry is extremely compressed and dynamic. It is full of vigor. Igor Pavluk is a scholar and as a doctor of social communication he teaches journalism. Igor Pavluk is a sociable person, always on the go, shuttling between Lviv and Kiev, Lviv and the capitals of European countries. Lesia Modrak, a poet and a literary critic. Я знаходила в цій ліриці надзвичайно глибокі стихії, надзвичайно глибокі якісь образи, поєднання язичництва і християнства. I will tell you honestly and frankly, I used to be fond of particularly Ігор Павлюк's love lyrics. In this lyrics I found extremely deep elements deep images, a combination of paganism and Christianity, the combination of, say, some quite incompatible things and very high and profound energy. No wonder the book called Disaster, 13-14 years ago, won the commitment of almost all Ukraine. Accordingly, people who tried to follow his poetic patterns appeared, mostly girls. I remember very interesting moments that somewhere in 2006 or 2007 Ihor Pavluk had such a kind of poetic school where students of Ostroh Academy wrote in such way that you could eventually read Pavluk in their works. Here are some typical words used in Pavluk's poetry, for example, winged, manly, bloody, and something else. And it was very interesting. Volodymyr Danilenko, a writer and a literary critic. Igor Pavluk began his literary career in the 90s. I would say that he was not the most prominent poet at that period of time. As a star of poetry, he popped up in the firmament of Ukrainian literature much later. I think this delay is primarily related to the Shevchenko National Award. Igor Pavluk was originally not in the list of the nominees of this national award. The number of the readers' positive responses and accolades, however, was so high that Igor Pavluk did become a laureate of the People's Taras Shevchenko Prize. Petro Zasenko, a poet and the chairperson of the selection panel of the National Union of Writers of Ukraine. Today, Igor Pavluk has inscribed his name in the history of Ukrainian poetry and Ukrainian literature in a broader sense. He is the author of a lot of patriotically orchestrated collections of poetry. For a general public, Igor Pavluk is a poet with his own unique poetic voice. This voice has its origins in the poet's awareness of and sensibility to Ukrainian history and art as well as in the poet's skills to convert this awareness and this sensibility to a rhetorically molded piece of poetic art. His poetic club is in tune with the present-day times. Igor Pavluk is a poet of impulse. The lines and metaphors of his verse are charged with the feelings of anxiety, and resonate with the imagery picking the reader's interest. Mikhail Sidorzhevsky, the chairperson of the National Union of Writers of Ukraine. 
Igor Pavluk's poetry is patterned with a few motives of Sergei Yesenin, a notable Russian poet of the last century. It is not improbable that at the outset of his literary career, Igor Pavluk consciously or unconsciously imitated Sergei Yesenin's man of writing. The period of tutelage was short, however, and now Igor Pavluk is a purely Ukrainian poet, a purely national poet, rooted in Ukrainian national soil, even though the echo of the Russian poet is felt hitherto. Any poet has the right to employ the techniques and devices, characteristics of the craft of another poet, say, of Sergei Yesenin. This is by no means a borrowing. Igor Pavluk's poetry is unmistakably original. He is a poet with an absolutely distinctive style and vision of the world, one of the luminaries of Ukrainian poetry. Igor Pavluk, as a poet, can be regarded as a disciple of traditionalism, one of the most prominent, but not typical, representatives of this tendency. To be more specific, Igor Pavluk is, to a certain extent, similar to, and at the same time different from, such poets as Boris Olinik, Dmitro Ivanov or Mikhail Shevchenko. Igor Pavluk has a markedly individual style and imagery. He explores the civic motives and sensibilities of the generation during the most dramatic period of Ukrainian history. His poetry provides an answer to a number of socially important questions. What happened to us in the later period of the Soviet times and during the years of Ukrainian independence? Where is our society heading for? What is our social consciousness concerned with? What is happening to Ukrainian society now? To respond to these questions, Igor Pavluk draws on the resources of the poetic world, and he does this successfully, I believe. Oles Gordon, a poet, a translator and a literary critic. Igor Pavluk is a unique phenomenon in contemporary Ukrainian literature in general, and perhaps most markedly in a poetic landscape of the city of Lviv, because Lviv was a launching pad for his literary career. Igor Pavluk's land of birth, though, was Volyn region. That is why I tested him once in the anthology called The Posa de Sjatniki II as the last romantic of Volin. Igor Pavluk is a real phenomenon because he reflects the sensibilities of the present age infused with this Volinian regional romanticism, originating from Lesia Ukrainka's poetry and on a larger scale from romanticism as a literary movement of the world. As a result, the readers are faced with a peculiar fusion of this type of romanticism subject to certain destabilizing effect, and the overtone recognized as those of Sergei Yesenian poetry, attended by the modern techniques and modern imagery. This is perhaps what makes Igor Pavluk's poetry particularly appealing. Dmitry Drozdovsky, a writer, literary critic, and the editor-in-chief of the Vsesvit magazine of world literature. Igor Pavluk's poetry is full of ennobling light and has a magic effect. It unites people. It is absolutely European. It contains a few codes of Sergei Yesenin's verse. Figuratively speaking, Igor Pavluk is growing out of Sergei Yesenin. There is something in Igor Pavluk's poem that reminds me of Byron. Even Pavluk's lifestyle has Byronic connotations. Byronic hero is an integral part of Igor Pavluk's character. Mind, though, that Igor Pavluk is Igor Pavluk. He has found himself in the realm of Ukrainian literature. He has gained his own freedom and his own independence as the coordinates of his literary career. Igor Pavluk's independence is a reward for the pain he has experienced as endured during his life. Igor Pavluk is receiving support from the public, he is open to the world, and the world is reaching out for him. It is not easy, however, not easy under the conditions of the war in the atmosphere of outright aggression. By twist of fate, just at this dramatic period of time, Igor Pavluk has got a chance to become the face of poetry in a modern world. At least there are tangible prerequisites for this vector of events. The meeting held in Lahore 
a city in Pakistan, and in New York, where evidence of Igor Pavluk's status as a specific voice of Ukrainian literature, a peacemaking poet, a philosophically minded individual whose process of learning never stops. Igor Pavluk loves the process of self-fulfillment, loves to discover in rapture the throbbing newness of the world. Igor Pavluk is a patriot of Ukrainian nation. He delights in the beauty of Ukrainian world. He is a veritable successor to a revered tradition of modern Ukrainian literature in general and Ukrainian poetry in particular. Dmytro Chistyak, a poet, translator and a literary critic. Тому що, як слушно зауважив Дмитро Дроздовський у передмові до англійського видання книжки Ігоря Павлука. After reading Igor Pavluk's poem, I made a conclusion that his poetry lies in the mainstream of modern European tendencies. This is because, as Mitra Drozdovsky argued in his preface to the English-language edition of Igor Pavluk's collection of poems, his poetics is related to a switch in a paradigm of the present-day literature of Europe, namely, the transition from postmodernism to metamodernism sensibility and poetic expression. We can assume that we are witnessing a return of the modernist centralism based on an emotional principle rather than a previously dominating principle of intellectual gain. This shift in art is fairly symptomatic, and I am conscious of similar tendencies in a young Ukrainian poetry. This shift is symptomatic again because the new poetics becomes a genuine poetry, a poetry that explores the essential issues of human experience. We expect from this new poetry the answers to the challenging challenges facing us, readers, as well as poets and literary critics. This new poetry is guiding us to the tenets defined in ancient literature as the sacral quest. Lesia Mudrak a poet and a literary critic. Actually, for me, Ihor Pavluk is a very unique figure in modern literature, because in deep traditions of, for example, Russian poetry and world poetry, he found his own true voice that stands out from, say, traditional poetry inherent to purely Ukrainian patriotic civic lyric motives. Ihor Pavluk in his works always tries to be out of some literary process or above the process, but still he remains a very vulnerable child and this is good because a poet who even until his 70 or 80 years is still a child remains a true poet. Exactly this childhood behavior, this vision of the soul of things, this is really true depth of the poetry. And because these are sometimes killing metaphors in poetry of Ihor Pavluk, they are impressive and they are astonishing. And not accidentally, this man is very popular abroad. This is because our Ukrainian poetry is extremely popular abroad. They might say that we don't have any worthy translators or worthy writers, but it's not true. Ukrainian poetry is, is powerful at the global scene. And poetry of Ihor Pavluk is the context of what poetry will not get lost. On the contrary, it will fill poetry with the word, with some new, purely national good prose and energy. Рівня на світовій арені вона дуже потужна. І от поезія Ігоря Павлюка в контексті світової поезії вона теж не загубиться, а вона навпаки наповнить світову поезію, скажімо, якоюсь новою, суто такою національною, гарною кров'ю і енергетикою. Олесь Гордон, a poet, a translator and a literary critic. 
uh, Igor Pavluk traveled all over the globe, from Lviv in the western part of Ukraine, to the countries in the East Asia, and from Lviv to the Western Europe and to the American continent. He was on the California coast and almost reached the far east of the former Soviet Union. He was building a military road there. This kind of global sensibility is inherent in his views of life and in his poetry. He tries to embrace the infinite, to explore all aspects of experience. I think it does him credit. In his poem, Igor Pavlyuk's attempts to combine different literary tendencies and different schools of style. His own style, however, is specific, incomparable and markedly individual. It is distinctly Pavluk's style, differing from the poetic worlds of other modern poets of Ukraine. Today, Pavluk is a mature artist. He is one of the most extraordinary phenomena in the present-day Ukrainian literature. Igor Pavluk's poems contain a number of epic motives. He is not only a poet, but also a dramatist and a prose writer. I personally think that the most attractive quality of Igor Pavluk's poetry is its lyrical stream. Well, our descendants, perhaps, will offer a different assessment of Igor Pavluk's poems. Dmitry Drozdovsky, a writer, a literary critic, editor-in-chief of the Vsesvit magazine of world literature. Today there are new books coming out. A collection of French translation of Igor Pavluk's poem will be published shortly. His large-scale tour of the United States is in the offing. This is expected to visit all the states of the country and talk to different audiences. He has established close cooperation with Mo Yang, a very talented Chinese writer and Nobel laureate. Mo Yang's book Red Sorghum was translated into Ukrainian by Nadia Kirnosova and published as a separate edition. Igor Pavluk uh, is warmly received by the world. The world can see Ukraine in the lens of his poems. Igor Pavluk had fruitful talks with Dalai Lama and other Nobel Prize winners, such as Derek Walcott, a great poet who lives a long way from our country, on the islands of Trinidad and Tobago. In, sp in spite of the differences in culture and mentality, Derek Walcott felt an affinity and consonance with Igor Pavluk's poetry. I think this is the time when future has something special in store for Igor Pavluk, something exciting challenging and at the same time significant. Uh, meanwhile, he has to be open and ready for further evolution and reach the fantabulous and unattainable for most of us Olympus. Dmitro Chistyak, poet, a translator and literary critic. Poetry springs from the times when it performed the function of deity invocation. Due to its powerful potential to create analogies, reinforced by an imagination of the poet, and his or her capacity to keep meditative vigil, poetry can instantaneously reveal the structures commonly disconnected and incomparable in everyday life. At the same time, the semantic charge of poetry brings about an overlap of images, or superimposition of one image on top of another. This ontological and existential characteristic of poetry, I presume, accounts for a powerful effect produced by a poetic word. Igor Pavluk's poetics exemplifies the poet's efforts to probe into the nature and impact of poetry. This is one of the reasons why he explores the deep layers of Ukrainian ethnic culture. His poetry reconstructs the author's myth of a spiritual expanse in an image-bearing conceptual sphere of a specific part of Ukraine, Polisia. This myth manifests itself as a purification from our mundane prosaic concerns. 
as a result, the smith of the author becomes a refined structure in an ideal Ukraine. Ideal does not mean idealized. In Igor Pavluk's poetry, Ukraine is ideal spiritually. Ukraine, for the poet, is an embodiment of human memory, the memory that is materialized and expressed by a poetic word. Ukraine is interpreted in Igor Pavluk's poems as a sacral underground spring working its way through the vast expanse of a historical perspective to the present day reality. Igor Pavluk's poetic word is a correlate to his life and to a stand he takes in life. He is never deceitful and, in fact, always tries to reconcile the opponents. When in London he said, quote, I love Russian culture, though I am aware that Russia today is a huge bear trying to crush the neighbors. My love for the Russian culture correlates with the absolutely adequate understanding of the geopolitical Russia today as a special formation that strives to restore a near empire by colonizing its neighbors, unquote. It is clear, therefore, that Igor Pavluk is not just a poet, he is also an analyst of our turbulent times. He is a wise philosopher who keeps learning and who doesn't say that he is co already cognizant of the truth. Igor Pavluk prefers to socialize with the honest and people who can, as it were, radiate noble light from within. Igor Pavluk learns from these people. He is open to the world and perceives the world with awe. Once, when we were in the United States and we lived near the ocean in Florida, Roland, the representative of Mr. Mo Young, warned him against swimming in the ocean, to, uh, owing to a risk of a possible attack of sharks. Igor, who was fascinated by the ocean, said, If any can go wrong, it will. Since I'm here now, I want to face the challenge. Indeed, Igor is ready to take a chance to do something that may seem pragmatic, reckless and crazy. But that is what his life is all about. And this is what imparts an extremely powerful energy to Igor Pavluk's poetry. Its rhymic pattern is for the most part traditional. The dominating aspect of his poems is phonics. The range of the resources of phonics in Igor Pavluk's poetry is wide, including both end rhymes and internal rhymes. I would like to draw parallels between Igor Pavluk's manner of writing and that of the classical poets of ancient Rome and Greece. In the ancient poems, as we know, phonics is an effective tool of conveying a poetic message that casts a magic spell on the listeners and readers of Igor Pavluk's poems. In this, I see their similarity to the text of the ancient poets. The invocation of deity in ancient civilization was provided by the interface of the agrammatical structures with their phonically shaped stanza of the verse. To sum up, Igor Pavluk is one of the most interesting poets of modern Ukraine by virtue of his rootedness in the deep layers of Ukrainian culture. This peculiarity of Igor Pavluk's verse makes it possible to interpret it in the lens of the latest research of modern Western poetry. This is why I hope that Igor Pavluk's poems will generate interest in French-speaking readers. I made a translation of Igor Pavluk's poems and contributed it to the anthology of Ukrainian poetry published in Paris. I believe we will continue our collaboration in similar types of projects. How can Igor Pavluk's poetry be translated into other languages? To be candid, the answer to this question is still a mystery for me. The syllabotonic poetry is sometimes translated by transforming it into a free verse form. As a result, the poem loses its melody. It loses its dynamics. What remains is just a pure thought, just a bare message, 
a poet wants to get across to the reader. Once I had a talk with Igor Pavluk. He said that his poetry is often translated abroad in the form of a free verse. If you want to analyze the central motives of Igor Pavluk's poetry, we have to bear in mind that his poems extend and develop the tradition of Mikola Vingranovsky and Mikola Zerov. Igor Pavluk's verses demonstrate a balance between traditional and intellectual poetry. In other words, he writes what most Ukrainian poets write about, though his poetic voice is unique and merits serious consideration.